something different today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to effectively do a bit of role playing in a video. And I've got uh, my good friend Wayne Heath from Zetagrid here today. Um, so Wayne works at Zetagrid. The irony of this video is we wanted to go through um, a setup for a backup for Microsoft 365 self-service portal. So the onboarding of an organization tenant and basically making it work from a self-service point of view for the new portal that we released as part of V6. So sort of role-playing video to show the setup end to end. Wayne is actually going to be playing the tenant um, with his tenant organizations. Wayne, you ready to go and uh, get this thing set up? Yeah, let's see that. Come on, let's go. Awesome. Okay. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to share my screen and sort of go through the steps at the service provider end to actually set up the organizations. Obviously, that involves um, a couple of steps now because of modern authentication, which is the obviously preferred way. In fact, I think the traditional way that you did it is going to go. So this is the way that needs to be done. From a service provider perspective, it adds some additional steps into the process because obviously to do that, we need to get the tenant to kind of say, yeah, I trust you guys to, to back up my organizational data, right? Let's go through that first step. So let's share that screen and start that. So the first thing I want to do is go and add an organization. So let's uh, right click here and add organization. And we're going to do Microsoft 365. So obviously we've got other options here, but we're focusing on people that are living directly in Microsoft 365. We're going to want to cover Exchange, SharePoint and Teams. And we're going to use modern authentication. So this is the part here where we need to, you know, do something with the tenant to complete this process. So we're going to basically register a new Azure AD application automatically. And for this step, we're going to go the tenant and Wayne, what's your organization name again? Uh, it's called Luz Noid. Uh, so L-O-S-E-N-O-I-D is correct. Luz Noid, okay. So we're going to choose a certificate. So just for the purpose of these particular demos to get this end to end, I'm going to do just a self-signed certificate against this new application that we're creating um, to allow us to be able to back up the tenant's data. Okay. And now let's click on next there. And this is a step that we have to now hand over back to, to Wayne at the tenant side. So we've basically got to get them to enter this URL and copy the code. Now, just by way, just to let you guys know, obviously we're doing this manually, but there are ways to actually automate this and do this um, through you know, either APIs or, or PowerShell or whatnot. So just before I hand you this code, Wayne, it's probably worthwhile uh, me pointing out a couple of resources that are online as well. So let's go to here. And at the moment, we've got a good blog by uh, Jorge de la Cruz. And actually, he's done a good blog series against um, all the details for doing things to configure Office 365 and V6. Um, so if you have a look here, he's got a good series. He's got things like how to enable the multi-tenant restore portal, which is a process we're going through, um, how to log on and create, you know, let's encrypt SSL. So he's got a really good series here. Um, if we go here, he's even got a really good diagram that I think shows the solution end to end. There you go. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, go to Jorge's blog here. And then what we're going to also do it's worth mentioning um, is that on the tenant side to complete the step in the next step to actually tie together the self-service portal with this new organization we're creating, there's a brilliant set of automation tools from uh, Chris Arshino, um, on up at GitHub. So he's actually made this really easy as well. And part of the process that we're going to go through, Wayne, is I'm going to effectively give you this PowerShell to, to run at your end as a tenant. Um, so that's a bit of information there. And obviously you've got the Veeam uh, KB there, which you know goes through how to set it up. Um, to be honest with you, it can be a little confusing for the first time, which is why I thought a video would be the best way to get it done. So with that, actually, let's just assume that I'm going to give you this address, right? So if you go to microsoft.com slash device login. Okay. So we won't show you, we won't show you this part of it. Okay, let me just quickly log in here. And I'm not sure if you can see that code. Use that code to basically authenticate. So what we're doing here is we're going to the Microsoft AD site, a device login, which is going to link the two together, but we're going to get permissions directly from Wayne's organization. And I think the role that you need to be able to do this is a, well, it's a global administrator, I think, Wayne, from, from memory. So as a tenant, yes, correct. you need to have an administrator that's a, that's a global administrator. So let me know when you've, you've got that going. Yeah. Yes, I'll do it now. 
It's thinking, man. It's thinking, yes, it's popping up. All right, good stuff. Codes, so we got that loaded. Let me provide loading. code. And through the magic of Microsoft Azure, hopefully when you approve that, we should see that turn green to say that we've got the organization set. So it's just asking me for the logon as Liz okay. Moyd, yep. as a logon administrator. That's Screen great. coming up with a Microsoft Azure CLI. There we go. So you're authenticated. So there we go. So I can right. see that Wayne.Heath at Lucenoid has authenticated. So now we can basically finish a setup. And it's again, it's worth mentioning that at this point, you obviously can automate this. Providers can do this through the portal. There's APIs to, to get this URL out and the code out, whether in an email or through a custom portal, that's possible as well. But obviously this is the manual way to do it. All right. So here at, at the service provider end, let's finish the configuration. So just making sure we've got access to all the bits that we need. And once this is done, we should be able to configure the job to protect the data. And we get to tie that all together in the next step to enable the multi-tenancy for the self-service portal as well. So let's finish that. So now what I can now do against Lucenoid, they're there in the organization. I can now add a backup job to them. So let's just, just do, uh, let's call this one job one. I'm very creative like that. And let's <laughs> not back up the entire organization because what we want to do query quickly for this demo is just select a few users. So we're going to get now as the provider, I can now go in and, you know, get a few of these guys. I'm going to do Craig's and let's just do Craig's for the moment, actually. Um, that's okay. But obviously I could select multiple ones there or the whole organization, which would be SharePoint, OneDrive and whatnot. Let's add that in. Um, go next. Uh, we're not going to exclude any items. And I'm just for the service provider end, let's just choose the repository that we want to go to. Okay, very good. All kind of standard there and select the job type I'm just going to go create and then let's run that to start with this shouldn't take too long because I don't think there's too many items in that actual job to start with so let's come back when this is finished all right so we finished that job so now we've got a backup point right so now the next part of this is to grant access to the self-service portal which is that great feature in version 6 that we had um, before that we're going to effectively um, add Wayne as a restore operator um, so with the portal, we can go in as an end user. So Craig, in this case, being this mailbox was just backed up, could go in and actually you know, use his credentials and restore his items himself. Or what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, an admin or a restore operator, that being Wayne's account. So he's got access to the organization and the scope to be able to restore on behalf of those other people. So let's click on add here. Loose noid, let's go do that. Okay, so we're going to choose Lucenoid and now we're going to go and add a particular user. So this will bring up the list of users in there. Let's pick on Wayne because we know he's got the right credentials. Um, and then basically we're going to get him to manage the entire organization or we could actually do that a little bit more granular. So this is a, in a sense, a bit of role-based access control for this particular account as well. Uh, nothing to exclude, that's good, close down. So now we've got basically that user there. So that's awesome. So the next step, is to actually tie this together and make this portal multi-tenant. So this is the slightly more complicated bit. Um, so let's kick that off. All right, so now that we've obviously configured the organization, we've got the job in play here. The next step is to allow Wayne to log in with his organization. So the multi-tenant portal that we've got um, is actually, let's, let's share your screen, Wayne. Let's prove actually that to, at this point that you can't log in to the portal that I've got. So why don't you share your web browser all right, so Wayne, just to make sure again that you can't log in at the moment before we do the final step, just go to the self-service portal. Let's see if you can right. log in. Let's see, let's go from there. Obviously, if you were doing this like in production, you'd be using proper SSL certs, right? Yeah. I'll basically log in here as Lucenoid, uh, at lucenoid.com. Let's see, now this, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is where this will actually run back to Azure and then back to your platform if all is linked together. That's correct, yeah. So we're gonna we're leveraging the, the authentication mechanism of Azure, which is part of your organization. And if this was connected the right way, in the multi-tenant sense, you'd be able to see your organization and do your restores. But we haven't done that last bit yet. So just to make sure that you know this isn't configured at the moment. Multi then the this good thing is, here uh, is that you're obviously using multi-factor authentication. It doesn't make for a great demo, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> no, uh, never.
All good. Now we should see an error. Yeah, it's gonna gonna go back. Yep. Okay, so firstly, yep, let's consent. A few permission things. Yep, all good. And accept. And it'll go back to the portal screen and hopefully it errors here. There we go, unable to connect. Okay, good, that's what we wanted. So now this is the final step. So every tenant that you onboard, you've got to number one, obviously create their organization, do the, to, um, do the authentication first to actually allow you to do the backup jobs. And now from a self-service point of view, we've got one more step. So I'm gonna go back and share my screen. Okay, the quickest way to do it is through the magic of PowerShell. Um, Chris Arsenault has configured a script that is very, very easy to send over to the tenant to finish the steps. Now, the script is very self-explanatory. Um, what you're gonna do is effectively only put the application ID in of the service provider end. So it even says it here, right? This is the only thing you've got to edit in the script. This is the service provider configuration area. So what we're doing is we're handing over the uh, application ID of the self-service portal to tie the two organizations together. Um, just quickly where you do get that, if you go through here and you go through general options, you go to restore portal, that's effectively the application ID that we're looking to copy over, okay? So with that, once I've done that, I'm gonna send this to the tenant. So again, you can do this through multiple ways. Obviously this is the manual way, so I've sent this over to, to Wayne and he's gonna finish that final step. So let's go back to Wayne's PowerShell screen and we're gonna to connect to Azure AD and run the script to tie it all together. All right, so it's gonna run the script. Sign in uh, to Azure using whichever account. Okay. Let's sign so in. I click on Blue's Noid and it's asking me this time for a password. Okay, so good stuff. I'll Let's go through here. In a password. Yep, so we're running that script that we've sent you. There we go. Six double zero. Very good. So you're Verify. basically authent you're authenticating here. Correct. Verifying. There we go. There we go. So you're now connected. Okay, so what, what is it saying here? You're now connected to Microsoft Azure, the restore portal. So there we go. So that's restore portal at mine. We've been granted admin consent to basically log into that portal now. So this is what we want. So this is the tenant side all done. So Wayne, now if you go back to where the portal was, in theory, okay. you should be able to log in now. All right, let's try, this, let's try this again. All right, let's try Wayne at this night again. Yeah, is it going to pick up the last authentication or is it going to ask you again? That's a big question here. I think it's going to go straight through because that session was previously. There we go. Look at that. It's worked. How good is that? So now Wayne's logged in as that restore operator. So if he changes the scope, so if you go down, click clear and change the scope, we should see Craig's mailbox there that we selected for. So let's have a look at that. There we go. So just um, the current user change it to Craig. And now, Obviously, again, Craig could log in with his own username and password, but Wayne, as the tenant administrator, can now go and do the self-service recoverability features for that tenant. So this is pretty cool because obviously now this portal is multi-tenant enabled, not only with um, the slimmer one, which I had initially, but also now the, the loose noid as well. And obviously, if the more customers and tenants that you get on, the process repeats itself. So Wayne, what do you reckon? That was end-to-end -end probably like five minutes really in terms of real time um, in terms of functions and what you had to do so obviously there's a little bit of manual step but I, I kind of reckon that that's okay for what it is because we're handing off authentication and security to the tenant so the service provider doesn't have to handle passwords or usernames or that kind of stuff so it's pretty important from that point of view and then at the end of the day you've got a self-service portal as well which you can use in a multi-tenant sense cool so yeah so like you said from a, now let's flip it again because obviously now um you're the service provider. You know, I, th I think from your point of view, this has streamlined it. It's given you guys an option to offer self-service uh, from our portal um, and yeah, build build a service around Microsoft 365 backups. Yeah, I think it's the main main thing is just to make it easy for everybody to use and also uh, not to, to, to use the client's um, administrator rights or anything like that because nobody will allow it to do that. Yeah, good and stuff. And as, as you explained with the application ID, uh, that's how you can do it. And the process is simple. 
That's it. That's it. It's all authenticated. So let's just go through the process one more time in terms of laying it out. So first step from a service provider perspective was to add the organization. That then challenges you guys at your end to be able to say, yeah, I trust that service provider to, to add my organization. We created a job. We got um, a restore point in there. Obviously, you're going to dictate. That's dictated by the tenant in terms of how they want to back up. You know, that's between the tenant and the service provider. And that last step was to basically, you know, get the application ID from the service provider, put it into that awesome PowerShell script from Chris, and then send it over to you to run as a tenant. One-time authentication, boom, we're good. So that makes it sound really easy. Um, and in effect, with all the great work that we've done at the back end and the scripts that Chris has got and, you know, the blog that your Jorge's put out, we've got this covered end to end. So hopefully this video was informative and it kind of, you know, made the process a little bit easier to understand now moving forward. So thanks Wayne for being a tenant. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you helping. All good, man.